Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Swissman15 back with another episode of this uh, politics and history series. This one's going to be a little different. It's going to be basically the handbook of manipulation, at least from my perspective, on um, how I, I say manipulation is done. And uh, this is kind of related, uh, this little how to manipulate video, in the fact that uh, politics and history is full of manipulation, politics is manipulation. Uh, whether it is for good or for bad. Um, in the end, it's always some form. So first, I want to say there are two things I want to get out front. One thing I'm going to differentiate between two forms of manipulation. There is the first um, more relevant form, which is like pragmatic, I don't know, pragmatic, logical manipulation, which is political manipulation, which is more like um, involved directly in politics, where you're not manipulating the person, but like it's how you freeze your deals and just any diplom diplomatic action, really. Dip diplomacy, also, manipulation. It's like uh, just making a deal. It's like a lot of the hot seat things. It's that you manipulate in that, and that's one way form. And then there's another one which is more a personal form, which is like emotional way of just like when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with a person, there's different ways of manipulating that. So uh, what I want to do before I get into anything, I want to... Um, <laughs> establish my credibility really because I could be any uh, teenager just spouting about manipulation and have no merit but I just want to say that basically um, manipulation and like word choice and just politics that area is like my only skill set <laughs> even though I'm not like anyone perfect or just a ra I'm not a random manipulator at all um, I manipulate at times, of course, um, mostly in games and rarely outside. I don't like to manipulate because I feel like it's wrong, especially when you're doing it emotionally and it, it also, yeah. So um, I'm pretty good at the diplomatic and polit political man manipulation more so. And emotional, I'm training myself in that, but I think I'm getting better and I'm pretty good. Um, I'll explain that later, but first I want to go to political and uh, diplomatic. And just for the record, if it's any manipulation or any form of reading people in general, if it has to do with anything romantically interested I'm in, like if it's a romantic interest between me and a woman, then um, then I am doomed and I have I lose all my skills for some reason. Um, other than that, if I'm on the outside or if it's in a, a like hot seat setting, I can do it rather well. So I just want to say like, um, for example, for the pragmatic and diplomatic manipulation, of course I'm not like in actual politics at this time, but based on um, I play a lot of Risk and I play a lot of uh, hot seat games and usually I can do diplomacy rather well and it works well because I um, I manipulate. And the good thing about that is that I'm not, I won't be spoiling my, I won't ruin my manipulation in these hot seats because um, they already know that I'm trying to manipulate them, and I already know they're trying to manipulate me. It's just whoever can get the better end in the long run. And the best way, also, I prevent them from uh, doing that is I also put in some fair deals with my manipulative deals so that they never know which one it is. <laughs> and actually, I put in a few that are uh, a balance against me. Uh, not too, too balanced against me, but balance enough against me so they think, okay, maybe he doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> or maybe a mistake. So I'm, I, I'm pretty good at that stuff. And then when it comes to more emotional ones, like the best thing I can do is control the discussion. I can't really like, not as much as just control the way someone thinks. I can't, I'm not that kind of manipulator. I'm working on it. I think you need a charming face for that. And I'm, I'm kind of lacking in that regard. But um, like what I've done for my friends is like some, say for example, one of my friends one time wanted to go to prom with a girl. And however, he didn't know if she had a date and he was going to do a proposal, but if she has a date, he was screwed. So basically, he wanted me to find out without giving away the fact that I'm looking for someone, so I can't go, Hey, do you have a date to prom? You have to really bring it up naturally. So I said one sentence, and I got the answer. I said, I hate how I have to date, um, I, I hate how I have to match my date to prom. And I said it to her, and that led her on a little rant where she said specifically at one point, if I had a date, implying she didn't. And so that's just one example. So let me go into the first segment of manipulation, which is political and diplomatic diplomacy manipulation, really. Political and diplomatic man manipulation, which is really very different from emotional manipulation, and that is my strong suit. So um, let me just show you, let me just go through the parts. So basically the first thing you have to do is identify what you want, which is usually pretty easy to do. 
Um, <laughs> if you're on a hot seat and like, I want that territory, um, usually you could just say uh, war, but if you want to say, I don't want to fight this person who's fighting me, you have to really think about it. So once you know what you want, which is really depends on everything, then you have to go to who you're dealing with. First thing with who you're dealing with is what do they want and what are your bounds? So those are really close connected because you can't ask someone like, oh, can I have all your territory? Of course, it's a drastic example, but there are many examples where when you're trying to manipulate, there are certain bounds that you just can't pass through. And one of them, and you have to really identify them before you ask. And sometimes you'll overstep the boundaries as a way of saying like, oh, wait, I want this originally. Okay, no, I'll, I'll cede this to you. And of course, every, both party knows they're going to do that. So eventually you'll find a middle ground, um, sort of. But you always want to think. Um, ahead for that and then you want to know what they want and you want to well, you want to make deals and Such and manipulate them to think that hey, I'm doing what you want when they're actually doing what you want If that makes sense So you want you're gonna think make your enemy think they are getting what they want when you are actually getting what you want um, I would use examples, but the more relevant ones are ones that are ongoing in my hot seats and I don't want to give that away. <laughs> At least the ones I haven't died in yet. <laughs> America's, I just lost that one apparently. Uh, spoiler, uh, maybe, but I don't care because, you know, um, I blame the Warpaths. I think my diplomacy was as good as it was going to get in that one. I mean, I came off, I messed up in the beginning, but then afterward it, there was nothing more I could do beyond the fact of the war passage game. But anyway, back to the thing. So. First, what you want, what they want, and your limits. So once you're there, what you have to really work on is setting up the deal. So the way you want to do that is really, really be careful with your wording. You want to be careful so that you, so that in the end you get what you want and you escape. So um, if I can think back to early in the Britannia hot seat, the way, this wasn't a deal per se, but it's a, a fine example. Um, I was talking with Scotland recently after we uh, decided on the factions, and I said to him, because I knew I was going to invade him but eventually, and it was a vain hope. This was a really far stretch, and somehow it worked. I, I was surprised myself. And actually, he denies that we ever had a discussion, because I brought it up a while ago. And then he goes, what discussion? And I, I will bet money that he would, if he's watching this, he'll say, that neither of those discussions happened. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I know this happened, unless I'm crazy. But um, basically, I <laughs> I might be crazy. I went up to him and uh, I said, you know, if I was attacked, I would retreat my forces to my core settlements. And that's all I said. And he, then we took, sort of talked about that for a little bit, but not much. But then afterward, that's exactly what he employed against me. And that's what I wanted because it's a terrible idea. <laughs> At least in the form that he did it in. Because he never used his massive army. And that's one form. It's just... That, that one was more just like... Um, that, that wasn't a deal per se. If we go to a deal, um, we can go with England. England and I sort of had a deal against Scotland. And I said to him, you know, he doesn't want me getting too powerful and he doesn't want to have a war in vain and he doesn't want to help me just to get Scotland. So I said, you know what, I'll guarantee you three settlements. And um, <laughs> of course that, that, that appeals to him. And he's like, okay. And also, just a note here, if you're gonna make any diplomatic deal, never break them because then it makes future ones easier to make because people think okay he's a good track record he hasn't broken one yet so at least then i can give him a good fair amount of trust because he wants it to happen and it's 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 actually been helping me now that i've actually never broken a deal and i won't be breaking any anytime soon um at all and ever like you have to be very careful that you have to make deals that you know you'll never break that way you'll always trust with me <laughs> um but anyway so i offered him a minimum of three settlements and then you get what you capture I knew he wouldn't capture much, and he probably knew that too, but he was glad that I offered him to. But then I was thinking ahead, I was thinking, you know, if I invade him before that, um, we never agreed to a truce, so um, he can have the Scottish settlements, but actually in the end he attacked me first. So I could have given it to him and then taken it right back, sort of like thing, but I never really had to do that. But in the end, he would never actually get the three settlements, was the thing, is that I was like, oh, I'll give you, you'll get a three no matter what, or you, I'd just leave it so you have to take them, or something of that matter, or take them, destroy them, give it to him, and then take them back, something like that. In the end, is that it, it gets me where I want, and he's not going to gain much, or he thinks he will, but he wasn't. So I, I think that we're sort of worked against Captain, but Captain wasn't really completely on my side, 
but it's just one of those things and it's just an example. Um, if I would reference other hot seats, I can't do that right now. Um, so that's just an example. Uh, so that's just the general ideas, what you want, what they want, and then you make your offer something very concrete, and then you have to be able to find loopholes. Like, um, okay, here's one. Um, England and I made a deal of a naval truce where we couldn't land on each other's shores. And I was thinking like, okay, there, if he, as long as he keeps this deal, he won't be landing anywhere on mine and I won't land on his. But I was thinking if Wales is kind, I can land on the east coast of Wales, which is literally right next to England, and then just march into England if necessary. So <laughs> that was my plan all along. Of course, I never employed it in the 30 turns you will see. Um, I never really landed in Wales and attacked England. But in the end, that, that was a potential thing throughout the deal. And uh, now the naval truce is gone, which is a little weird. But um, <laughs> just that, that, that's the main thing is that you have to define your deals, make them really tight knit so they break them, but you don't. And then you find a way to break, to break them, not really breaking them, but going around them, finding loopholes. So that's what you would have to do is careful wording, know what you want, and know what they want and make it seem like they're getting what they want when they really aren't or it's going to help you in the long run and along that matter um beyond that for political manipulation you have to throw in sometimes where you're helping them so that they you have to save certain situations where you really need something done so you can you have to really work and make sacrifices in certain deals for others uh that's just my idea so um in that regard, let's go with a historical example, if I can think of one off the top of my head, which is probably unlikely, but I'll give it a shot. Um, let's see, there are many deals um, in, in uh, medieval Europe, of course. Uh, well, actually, this is post-medieval. Um, this is pre-modern Europe, post- somewhere... Just, we'll get in the time period once I pick the example. Um, we could go with... Hmm... <laughs> I can't think of an example off the top of my head that's getting really stressful. Cavour. If we go to Cavour, who united Italy, um, he made a deal with France saying, hey, we'll fight Austria together and we'll, I'll give you Savoy, um, which is a French-speaking part of Italy at the time, well, uh, Piedmont at the time. And he didn't actually want Savoy because it wasn't Italian and they didn't want it and it just didn't flow. He's like, I don't even want it. It's not much territory and I have more to gain. But then Napoleon III at the time was thinking, hey, I'll use this opportunity to take over all of, even them. And then Cavour thought ahead, placed troops there, gave up Savoy in the end, but got a lot more. And that's just an example. So he, he was thinking ahead, saying like, okay, I'll help you, you will help each other against Austria, but in the end, I gain the most. You think you're gonna gain a lot, but you're not. Because Napoleon III was thinking, oh, I can be like my father and take over all of Northern um, Italy from the Austrians and the Italians. <laughs> but in the end, no. So that's just one example. Um, so I hope I explained uh, political manipulation well. Of course, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I'm going to miss stuff, and I may not be clear in my word choice. So if you guys have any questions about the political, ma ma political manipulation, please do ask them in the comments, and I will uh, answer them, of course. Um, moving on to emotional manipulation, this is not nearly my strong suit. Um, of course, I think I'm better than the average person, but I'm not anything spectacular. I'm not anything, I'm not as adept as I am in the political manipulation regard because I usually get my deals done in political manipulation. But um, basically, all I can really do for an emotional is I, I'm good with word choices and I can usually guide a discussion and basically say, something where I know I'll get a response and usually I just use that to make a joke <laughs> so I can just so I can get a joke out so I'd say something hoping someone would say something so I could make a joke um that pertained it I don't know why I do this this is just my person uh, that's the person that I am but other than that if you want to emotionally manipulate someone and you want them basically emo emotional me if I could speak like a normal person that'd be great emotional manipulation is basically trying to get someone to like you and then when they like you they do stuff that you want and that is basically entails is that um, first thing the obvious ones is that you know, you kind of you need the parameters of being outgoing to be an emotional manipulative person. Um, you need to be able to compliment and compliment well. Um, I'm okay at that. Um, I I do it weirdly, but it, it works in the end. But the other things that anyone can do is 
if you want someone to really agree with you in a certain situation, you can. what you do is you reflect what they say. So if they say, um, I think Shannon should do blah, blah, blah. And then you go, oh, so you think Shannon? And then you repeat what they said, and then you, because then they, they think you're listening. If you nod when you speak, it really helps because then they think, oh, they're agreeing with me. Okay, they're going along with listening. And also just mimic their body language. If they are open with their arms and stuff, you will just slowly open. Don't don't be like exact copy and like, ooh, he's moving his hand this way. I'll do that as well and just like caress the face. Um, no, you just want to just general. And if they're using a lot of hand gestures, use, use a lot of hand gestures. It's very subtle, but it makes them think, oh, they're like me. Stuff like that. Um, there are other things that I'm trying to remember that I do. Um, eye contact is always a good thing um, if you look away. And don't use, always use colloquial diction or try to. Because people have now said, oh, if someone says, do n I, I did not do this, it's, a, it's an indicator of a lie. Um, of course, then you say, I, I don't do this. You, Okay. So that's just a thing is that you have to be able to, to uh, just sound natural and then really you have to just mimic them, try and make them feel like you are one of them. And that is the way. Of course, it's not always going to be the way. And in any manipulation, both of them, you have to have a certain person for it. Not everyone can be a manipulator um, or be good at it. You have to be able to act like I'm a pretty good actor um, myself. I can fake emotion really well. Um, actually like i get i convinced someone that i was pissed off because he thought that the world was round the other day and it was like i was convinced like i was like dude the world is flat don't you realize the world is flat and this is this is actually how i get angry is i use this voice it's very calm and like passive aggressive voice like when i'm talking to my mother i'm like no you can't do that mom <laughs> this is actually my angry voice i'm just like mm. or um if i get really angry though i start then i shout but that's a little different if i need to shout in acting i will an acting scenario and I can also act sad and different stuff all, all the act sad you have to just like slower your speech and then look down and just sound a little bit sad and the, like I, I'm never really sad so people don't know when I'm sad also um, I'm gonna whisper this one because I convinced my parents that I'm a terrible liar when I'm a good liar so they think they don't know when I'm lying because I, I purposely acted bad lies so they think they know when I lie when they really don't that's just one of the things I do um, apparently so anyway guys that's just that's just the idea um if you have any questions of course i probably left a lot of this ambiguous i really want you to ask me any questions about manipulation that you have and i will answer them to my best ability um i'm hopefully this is in hot seat suicide where people will see through all my deals by now but i really doubt it because i do incorporate fair deals and other ones so i can get the important ones is when i manipulate actually i manipulate pretty much all of them in, but into a regard where i think long term so i manipulate some of them against myself so that it'll help me in the long term it, it it's weird so you have to have a certain tact for it so if i think you if you have a tact you probably understood most of this uh, this is more a beginner's thing if you really want to start like jumpstart manipulation of course for games don't don't manipulate people rampantly and uh, if you get caught you screw up everything just really don't manipulation is not a good thing in most regards there are some positive manipulation just try to refrain from it um, if you're going to use this so um, if you hate me now because I um, am good at manipulation and acting then I'm sorry but please do ask any questions if you do have any questions about manipulation and I will put my best response because I missed a lot of things here I, I do but if you like this video please like if you have anything to say comment and please subscribe if you're new to this and I'll see you all in the next episode goodbye my friends